The Black Diamond Storm is one of the more popular entry-level headlamps on the market, and for good reason. With many modes, a variable brightness, and a bunch of color options, the Storm seems to fit any scenario a hiker or runner may have. But does the performance live up to the hype? Well, that depends, and in this review, I'm here to help you figure out if the Storm is the right headlamp for you. I made this review with Ultra Running in mind, which actually expanded the review quite a bit. If you're a hiker or a camper and you're looking at the Storm lineup, uh, this review is definitely going to be for you, but there may be some additional details that you might not care about. This is fine, however, because in all of my video reviews, I include some pretty detailed timestamps down in the comments, so if you look there, you can jump ahead and find uh, that feature that you may be interested in. For this for you, we'll be looking at the Storm 400, though there are some newer models, such as the Storm 450 and the 500R. The whole Storm line is incredibly similar, so my review on the Storm 400 will be about 90-95% to 95 applicable to the other models. So stick around in the review, and at the end I'll go over the different versions of the Storm and which ones I would recommend. To start off with specs, the Storm 400 offers 400 lumens at max brightness and down to 8 lumens at its lowest setting. For max burn time at the highest setting, you're looking at 5 hours, and for the lowest settings at that 8 lumens, you're looking at 150 hours. Most users will generally use a medium to medium high setting, so I'd expect 10 to 20 hours before you're going to have to replace those 4 AAA batteries. The Storm features an IPX67 rating, meaning it's totally protected against dust and protected against 1 meter of immersion into water for up to 30 minutes. So unless you're scuba diving, uh, this should be uh, the right headlamp for you. The Storm weighs in at 120 grams, or about 4.2 ounces. Not the heaviest headlamp, but compared to my previous headlamp, the Petzl Tika, it is quite a noticeable difference. However, the Petzl Tika only uses 3 AAA batteries as opposed to the 4 AAA batteries the Storm uses, so it's a trade-off between weight and longevity. The Storm also has a two-button system, with the larger button being cycling power and the smaller button being cycling between modes. Uh, I will go over the different modes in the next section and the operation of the two buttons. So first up on features, we have the different modes the Storm offers, and there are three main modes. The first mode, it's my highest used, it's the distance mode. For the distance mode, the Storm puts out a very concentrated beam, uh, it reaches about 100 meters, and it's very penetrating. Mm, penetrating. What? <laughs> this mode can reach up to 100 meters at max brightness, but at a medium to lower medium setting, you're still getting some uh, very good visibility, 15, 20, 30 meters. The second mode is proximity mode. This mode is not very penetrating at all and features a very wide diffused beam. This beam is great for rummaging around a bag uh, at aid stations when you're switching between that distance mode and you just, uh, you don't want as much light, you don't want to blind people, but you still kind of want to see what you're doing. That proximity mode is going to get that done. I don't usually run with this mode because it requires the max brightness for me to navigate safely. For that, I'm sticking to the distance mode. That way I can see 15, 20, 30, 40 meters ahead of me. The next mode is colored mode, which for me, I use it mostly on the beach when you don't want to disturb the wildlife, such as the turtle hatchlings. It features a red, a green, and a blue output. All of those, just like the other modes, have variable brightness settings that you can toggle between. Now the last option, it's not its own separate mode, but a feature that affects all the other lights. Uh, that would be the strobe function. This is accessed by double tapping the power button. This feature is great for when I'm about to cross a busy road or when I didn't have a backlight. I flipped the light around, double tapped it, and got a bit of extra safety. The brightness is also variable and not set to high, medium, and low values. When you press the power switch while the light is on, the light will begin to slowly fade to its lowest level rise up to its highest, go back down to its lowest, till you depress the button, and it locks it into that setting that you depress the button on. This allows me to really lock it into the perfect amount of brightness for me, so it's nice to be able to make some micro adjustments and really fine tune it to what I need. The Storm also features a brightness memory, meaning that when you turn off the light, it'll save the setting and the lumen level that you had set the Storm at. I do think this is a really good feature, but for a product at this price point, uh, it's actually a necessity, so uh, really happy they included it. If they didn't, then uh, that would definitely go on the negatives. The Storm also features something that Black Diamond calls a power tap technology. This feature means that when you give a slight tap on the side of the light, it'll go to its max brightness, and when you give it another tap, it'll go to the brightness that you had set. This is great because 
Sometimes when I'm navigating a trail, I need a quick 30 seconds, a minute of max brightness just to get my bearings. So it's good setting it real quick, finding out where I'm at and turning it off. I find this setting extremely convenient and I use it quite often, way more than I thought I would. The Storm also has a locking feature. When you press down the two buttons together simultaneously for a few seconds, it locks and you can't uh, turn it on, you can't toggle the modes at all. This is of course great for when you toss the light in a backpack and uh, it moves around, something might push the button and you get to your destination and the light's dead. Not gonna happen with the Storm, uh, just lock it, toss it in your bag, don't have to worry about it. Finally, one of my favorite features is the battery indicator. When you have the light on, then you turn the light off. There's three LEDs on the side that will light up to indicate what the battery level is at. This is an excellent feature because I know that before a race, uh, during a race, I've swapped out batteries that probably had hours of life left in them just out of uh, precaution, didn't want the headlamp to go dead. So uh, this is another feature that'll save you a lot of batteries. I used the Storm at the Cruel Jewel 100, which took me a little under 36 hours, which equates to about a night and a half of full-time use. Four AAA batteries got me through the entire night, and when I went to my car, turned it off and checked the battery, I still had half a charge left. So this thing could easily get you through two nights of full use if you're operating at a medium, maybe medium low setting. I did use it at a lower than medium setting just because that's what I needed. I could see the trail just fine. Uh, I was worried about conserving battery and running out even though I had, I think, eight AAA batteries uh, <laughs> on me at the time. So I could have just done max burn time the whole time and been fine, had some spares. But hey, that's, uh, that's what I get for being precautious. Now, this is a storm review, but I need to say a few words on the Petzl Tika because when I was doing this review, I realized there's $20 separating these two headlamps and I need to go over the features of the Tika and what $20 more will get you for the Black Diamond Storm. First, the Tika has one button used to turn the headlamp on, cycle between the modes, and toggle between red LED mode and regular mode. With the Petzl Tika, you get three brightness options low, medium, and high. When you cycle the power on the Tika, it resets to the lowest level every time you turn it on. So that means when you push the button, it's always gonna be low, and then within a second or two, you need to push it again for medium, and then again for high. The Tika only has one output beam pattern, and I would say that's a mix between the Storm's distance mode and the proximity mode. It's uh, not quite as condensed and tight as that beam on the Storm of the distance, but it's not nearly as diffused as the beam on the proximity mode. I have to say, I actually kind of prefer this beam style on the Tika because like I said, it's a mix between that tight beam and very wide. So it gives uh, quite a good view of the trail or the road as you're running. I'll still use the Tika for any short night races, but for any overnight races or multi-day excursions, I'm picking that storm up. My first negative is the main power button not working. Uh, this has happened on a few occasions. Uh, by a few, I mean two. And both of those times, my daughter was playing with the headlamp. Uh, I was watching her. She wasn't being overly rough. She was just using it as normal. And uh, all of a sudden, she told me the, the light's not working. So picked it up, tried to toggle the light. It was not working. I figured she broke it somehow. Maybe it was a failure waiting to happen. And I uh, was very disappointed, very frustrated. So I uh, just put the headlamp down for the night. I went about my business, went to bed, woke up the next morning, pushed the button, worked just fine. Uh, on, off, toggling, nothing wrong with it. If anyone in the comments could maybe explain why this happened, uh, maybe it's a fail-safe mode that when the button gets pressed too many times in a certain period, it just stops working for a uh, set duration. Uh, I, I got no clue. Uh, please uh, fill me in here. Now the beam shape is another one of my, I wouldn't say a negative, uh, but like I said, that Petzl Tika light, it just, the beam pattern is perfect. It's not too tight, it's not too wide, uh, just perfect. So I would maybe appreciate if the spotlight mode was maybe a bit wider. I'd sacrifice a bit of that distance for a slightly wider beam. So uh, I wouldn't say overly negative, but uh, just something that I wish there was more options. Uh, maybe add that as a fourth mode. Uh, I don't know, just my opinion. Finally, 
uh, it's a bit of a heavy light. Uh, it's also a bit of a big light too. Uh, when it sits on my head, this is the first time the whole review I've actually put on the headlamp. That's not a good sign. <laughs> so when that light sits on your head, as you can see, it's, it's quite a big light. It does uh, bounce around quite a bit. Uh, you can tighten it. Uh, might give you might give yourself a headache, but uh, you can tighten it a little bit and it doesn't bounce as much, but it's still gonna see a little bit of play. Uh, not not too big of a deal. Uh, like, I, like I said, I've used this in some overnight ultra marathons and it's never been an issue, but it is definitely noticeable compared to smaller headlamps like the Tika I keep bringing up. Another thing too is because that spotlight mode is so condensed, uh, even if this moves a little bit, you're gonna you're gonna see that beam moving quite a bit when you run. So it may be a little jarring for you if you're not used to that. Uh, the Tika also moves a little bit, but like I said, due to that wider beam pattern, it's not quite as noticeable. Uh, it is very noticeable with the Black Diamond. I'm just gonna keep it on for a little bit. Why not? <laughs> So what I like to do for these reviews is I like to go and look online at the negative reviews and see if those are applicable, if maybe people just don't know how to use the headlight. Uh, see what's up with those negative reviews that you read. The first negative review is that the back of the headlamp, the battery enclosure, there's a little plastic piece here and apparently it breaks quite often. I can definitely see this as a point of failure. Uh, this back battery door is held on very tightly. Like I mentioned, it's IPX67 rated, so it's completely dustproof. It's waterproof for one meter up to 30 minutes. So this little plastic piece, you're asking a lot of it. Now, funny enough, during my review, I was looking over the headlamp, examining it, and what do you know, if you look right there, my plastic piece is cracked. <laughs> there is a small crack in it. Uh, so the reviews, uh, that negative review is 100% true. The good news is Black Diamond's customer support is apparently excellent. So if you write them, they will remedy the situation. This is actually quite a disappointment considering the headlamp is only about six months old. Uh, that broke rather quick. So I'm gonna write up Black Diamond, uh, get a replacement before my uh, cross four of 200 ultra marathon that I'm doing in two weeks now. The next negative review is that the headlamp drains batteries very quickly. Uh, this is true if you operate at the max burn time. However, it does state that you get five hours of output at max burn time. The one negative I will say is that you're not gonna get 400 lumens for five hours. As the light stays on and the batteries drain, the output level starts to go down. So at those final hours, when you have the lamp on max brightness, you are not gonna get 400 lumens. You're gonna get uh, significantly less. Finally, I saw quite a few reviews saying it was too complicated to use. Uh, not for me. Uh, it's got two buttons. The instruction manual doesn't really have uh, detailed instructions broken down uh, in words. It's got pictures. I think they're trying to save some space because the instruction manual is in like 30 different languages. And so adding some instructions for each mode would have probably taken up like 20 more pages of the instruction manual. So it does have pictures, kind of like uh, an Ikea project on how to operate it. Uh, just from those pictures, it was uh, pretty easy to understand. Uh, even then, it's got two buttons. Mess around with it, hold one, push the other. You know, it's it's not too difficult to, to figure out how to use. Uh, I even forgot how to toggle into a mode one time on a run. Uh, and I was able to just play around with it for like 30 seconds and figure out how to do it. So uh, I'm gonna have to say that's not a very valid criticism of it being overly complicated. The Black Diamond Storm is an impressive little light and despite some flaws, some minor and one or two major, I think for $50, it's an excellent headlamp. Even more so right now, at the end of 2022, you can find this on sale for about $35 at many, many retailers. Uh, that's an absolute steal. You can get the Petzl Tika that I showed for right now on Amazon for about 25 bucks. So $35, $10 more for the Black Diamond Storm. Uh, for me, it's completely worth it. Now, a big concern for me is that back door breaking off. I'm running the Across Florida 200 in two weeks. That's a 200 mile ultra marathon across Florida, through the Ocala National Forest, uh, across the Florida Trail. I really need a headlamp that's gonna last the entire time. And I'm, I'm, I'm still trusting the Black Diamond Storm, even with that back battery issue. I'm gonna bring the Petzl Tika as a backup 
but I really think this is gonna get me through the whole night and I'm not too concerned with it breaking out on the trail. Famous last words. <laughs> Now, I mentioned that at the end of this review, I would go over the different models that Black Diamond offered for the Storm lineup. And the first is the 500R. This is a 500 lumen max output rechargeable version. This headlamp's gonna run you $75 for the rechargeable version. Now, for about $15, $20 more, you can get some of the higher end Petzl headlamps. You can get some of the entry level Phoenix lights. And I personally can't say if those are better options, but those are some tried and true headlamps. Those are some pretty awesome torches. And so if I was right now going to spend that much money, I'd probably go for the Petzl Ico Core or maybe a Triad Phoenix Light. Now the Storm 450 is the next model in the Storm lineup. And that offers, uh, as you can guess now, 450 lumens of max output. This model, from what I've read, hot garbage. <laughs> Stay away from it. Don't get it. So many negative reviews based on uh, build quality and a few other things. Uh, plus it's $60, uh, way more expensive than you can get the 400 for. And additionally, it only has three AAA batteries instead of the four that the Storm 400 offers. So you're gonna sacrifice a lot of burn time for those three batteries. So in summary, where does that leave us with the Storm lineup? Honestly, I would pick up a spare <laughs> Storm 400 uh, if you had the money. I got this spare one for $35. If Black Diamond wasn't able to replace this light uh, due to it being lost or smashed or whatever, uh, I want a backup version because I, I do like it that much despite a few of its flaws. For the 500R, as I mentioned, it's 75 bucks. Uh, if that went down on sale to 55, 60 bucks, I'd probably consider picking one up for sure. Uh, the reviews for that one are awesome. It seems like a great light, but it's really hard for me to pull the trigger on a, a $75 light that offers uh, the features that the Storm 400 has. My hope is that Black Diamond addresses the issues with the Storm 450 and maybe releases a new version of the 450 or maybe a 500 version that's non-rechargeable. Uh, that way it brings the price down a little bit. In that case, I would definitely pick another one up. So, as I mentioned, my advice to you right now is to look on Amazon, look on Black Diamond's site, look on uh, backcountry.com, you know, all the outdoor sites, and see if you can pick up a $35 Storm 400. I will wait till next year, see what Black Diamond does with the Storm lineup for their next iteration. And but for right now, uh, you can't go wrong with the 400 while it's still in stock. Now, as I mentioned, I'll have mine for the Across Florida 200. So if you're interested in that video, uh, like, subscribe. It should be out sometime in December. I'm going to run it over Black Diamond, Black Diamond, <laughs> Black Friday weekend, uh, not Black Diamond weekend. Although for Black Friday weekend, you might be able to pick up a Storm 500R for a, a pretty cheap. So maybe, uh, maybe look during a uh, Black Friday and see if you can pick up a Black Diamond. But uh, <laughs> as I was trying to say, I'm going to be running that at the end of November. And by December, I should have a short video. By January, probably the full video. So like and subscribe. It's going to be pretty amazing. Uh, if you look back at some of my other videos I did on the Georgia Jewel Pinellas Trail Challenge at Vero Beach Octopus Ultra, all those races, uh, I want to bring the course to life. I want to make it so that you feel like you're running along beside me. So uh, really appreciate it if I get a like and subscribe so you can see that video come in. But if not, uh, you know, keep a lookout for a cross border 200 in December or January. As always, uh, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you do something amazing. I was gonna do something goofy, but I can't think of anything. Now I feel kind of like a, like a dickhead.